One of the ultimate goals that Christ has for every believer is to become a mature believer. Nothing's worse than being the pastor of a church of a lot of immature people. Amen. I didn't know. I didn't think the twelve o'clock crowd would say amen to that. Uh, but that's what God's ultimate goal is: maturity. And maturity is measured by a variety of ways. The Scripture teaches us there's a multiplicity of ways that maturity is determined. You know how mature you are based on how you respond to adversity. You know how mature you are by how you treat others who you know don't like you. You know how mature you are by how you speak and talk to other people, what your goals and priorities are in life, how you make decisions, how you give. All of those matters, all of those things, according to the scriptures, help to reflect or determine the level of your maturity. This particular text speaks to mature disciples. It is speaking about mature disciples and challenging us that we are making decisions in our life that are guided by higher level principles. Now follow me and walk with me for just a few moments because Jesus is talking in this 23rd chapter, verse one, he is dialoguing with the multitude and his disciples. Somebody say the multitude and his disciples. Which, which means that everybody in the multitude is not a disciple. Everybody on your row is not a disciple. Everybody in your section is not a disciple. We've got a lot of people in the crowd, but not everybody's a disciple. But he talks to them, and while he's talking to them, he gets down, and in verse, starting around verse 13, he uses the word woe. Woe to them. It is a warning. It is a, a sign of warning. Woe, he says. Woe to you. Woe. Woe means look out. Danger. Stop and take heed. Pay attention. Woe. It's, woe is the words that the robot said in Lost in Space when he said, danger, 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 Will Robinson. Okay, that was before y'all's time. Y'all don't, don't know that. A couple of y'all remember the robot in, okay, all right. Thank all seven of y'all for, for that. In, in today's language, woe would be OMG, <laughs> oh my God. It means pause, take a moment. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. He gives us a multiplicity of warnings. I wish I could talk about them all. I mean, he starts at verse 13, and he, in this one chapter of the 12 woes in the book of Matthew, eight of them are in the 23rd chapter of Matthew. A series of warnings that he talks about. I was gonna talk about verse 13 and 14, and talk about the two woes in verse 13 and 14, but, but then verse 15 says, I got a woe in me too. And verse 16 says, if you're gonna talk about verse 13, 14, and 15, you gotta talk about me. So I realized I can't talk about all these woes because each one would carry with itself its own warning, its own uh, message. But I wanna focus in on verse 23 when Jesus says, woe to you scribes and Pharisees. Let me tell you who the scribes and Pharisees are. They are the religious people of their day. The, the scribes were those who were responsible for recording and writing the laws of God. The Pharisees were the ones who took pride in the fact that they walked and lived their lives according to the, 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 the law. They, they, they took pride that they dotted the I's and crossed the T's. They, they thought they had it going on like that. They thought they were all of that. But Jesus calls the scribes and Pharisees a name. In verse 23, he calls them hypocrites. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. The word hypocrite means to be a play actor, stage actor, to wear a mask, to play a false part, to be something that you're not. I didn't expect too many amens from this 12 o'clock crowd because this crowd is full of hypocrites. Yeah, there's hypocrites all around you. Your mouths would be to tell the truth. Everybody in here got some level of hypocrisy in your life. Let me give y'all another opportunity to say amen on that very profound point. Everybody in here has some portion of hypocrisy somewhere in your life. Now look at y'all. Y'all look all saved, sanctified. Y'all look 
good, that y'all dressed up, looking pretty, y'all. Y'all want folk to believe you ain't poor. <laughs> That's hypocrisy. That's pretending that you're something that you're not. You're driving a car that you are parking around the corner, your neighbor's house, because the snatch man is looking for it. Come on, say amen. If y'all all say amen, nobody know I'm talking about you. A couple got out of their car and walked into church together, holding hands, looking so happy with each other. But when they get back home, they're sleeping in different beer rooms. Hypocrisy. <laughs> Ooh, it's tight. It's rough up in here. It's difficult. But it's okay. I want the hypocrites to come to church. I can't think of a better place to bring a hypocrite than the church. I don't mind you coming here as a hypocrite. I just don't want you to stay a hypocrite. We want you to stop pretending and get God to bring you to a place where you are genuinely living out what it is you are perpetrating that you're living. Yeah, yeah, y'all coming here with y'all Bibles and the cross around y'all neck, raising y'all hand and just worshiping the Lord. But when you get in the car, and the moment you turn on the car, y'all got that music blasting that ain't saying, oh, how he loves me. I think I've run out of amens, Pastor Gooch. I think I've, I've got my portion for the day. But he says something to these hypocritical scribes and Pharisees who are perpetrating and pretending and acting like they got it all together. He says to them, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because here's what you do. He says, you pay tithes of mint and a nice and comments. He says, and here's what he's saying to them, if I could sort of put this in some sort of a, a, a thing, they are, they are people who took pride in what they practiced. And it's a dangerous thing. They, they, took, they took a level of pride and arrogancy that they paid their tithes. And I call that the practice of taking pride in what they did. They were so proud that they paid their tithes. Just like some of you, you're so proud that you pay your tithes. It's a level of arrogancy. Your nose is up in the air. You think you're all that because you pay your tithes. Matter of fact, some of y'all are just like them. They pay their tithes down to the penny. And that's what verse 23 says when he says, you pay your tithes of mint and the nice and comings. Here's what Jesus is saying. You are paying your tithes down to the penny. That's what some of y'all do. Not, not you, but some of the people around you. They write their check out exactly to 10%. You know what? Let me say, can I tell y'all something? Can I pause here and step aside and say something to the side for a minute? I'm not going to take up no offering today. Okay? I, I feel a tension in the room. I see y'all grabbing y'all's purses. I'm talking about tithes. I'm not taking up no offering today. Okay? Let me get back into the message now. But I just want y'all to be free from that. I'm not targeting for money. I'm after your heart today. I'm after getting your heart in the right place. Some of you pay your tithe down to $72.83. For some reason, you concluded that God is not worth the additional 17 cents. You paid your tithe and not a, not a penny more. And you think God ought to be happy and celebrating. And you walk with pride because you've given back to God what's already rightfully his. Can I get an amen right there from somebody? He says, you pay, these, these scribes and Pharisees pay their tithe down to the penny. They paid it down to, and, 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 and Jesus says to them, here's the problem. You've paid your tithes, but you have neglected the weightier matters of the law. He says, you ought to be governing your life on weightier matters. You see, while you are arguing and bickering among yourselves about whether you should pay on the gross or the net, you ought to be graduated from that and going on to weightier matters. It's hot. It's hot. It's tough. And that's what Jesus is saying. You think you're so good, verse 23. You think you're all that and you're a bag of chips because you paid your tithes, but you should be making decisions in life based on weightier principles. 
And that's my challenge to us today, that there are principles that they should have been promoting. There are principles that they should have incorporated. That's my second point, if there is such a one. There are principles that you and I should be making decisions about in our life. The problem is they neglected them. They, they ignored the weightier matters. They didn't want to hear about these weightier things. They didn't, want to have, they didn't want to have dialogue, and Jesus calls them out on it. He says, you pay your tithes of a, uh, down to the penny. You've neglected the weightier matters of the Lord, justice, mercy, and faith. What am I trying to say to you today? I'm trying to challenge you today and try to get you to see and understand that we should be graduating past the tithe. Amen. Yeah, we, we should be so far past that. Some of y'all are still paying the same tithe, you're at the same level in your walk with God that you were five years ago when you first got saved. I mean, it took you probably 10 years to get to the tithe thing, so now that you're tithing, you're priding yourself and your neck is stuck out because you're finally tithing. Oh, by the way, According to the scriptures, I'm just going, I'm, 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 let me drop a bomb on you. This is verse 23. The, Jesus called the hypocritical, he called the scribes and Pharisees hypocrites, and the hypocrites tithed. Y'all missed a great spot. Let me break that down for you. That means if you ain't tithing, you haven't, raised, you haven't risen up to the level of a hypocrite. Ooh, look at this section right over here. I don't think I got a single amen out of this section right here. Did y'all did y'all hear what I said? The hypocrites tithe. If you're not tithing, you below a hypocrite. You worse than a hypocrite. Because at least the hypocrites did tithe. I, I think I said I had a church full of hypocrites. I think I have a church of less than hypocrites. He said, what you ought to be doing is making decisions about your giving on weightier matters. You, you ought to be looking at your service to the kingdom on weightier things. Some of you join a ministry just so you can say, I'm in a ministry. So you join a ministry that has the least obligation and commitment, that's going to require the least amount of time, where you don't have to go to no meetings. You can just do it from, we got ministries you can do from your house. So you join that so you can say, I'm in a ministry. When you ought to be at this point matured beyond that, and you ought to be making decisions based on what's just. As a matter of fact, that's what verse 23 says, that you ought to be using justice. You ought to be making decisions about your giving and your serving based on justice and mercy and faith. Can I talk about these three things for just a quick moment? Then I'll let you go. I'll get out of your hair. I won't holler at you no more. Justice. Somebody look at your name and say justice. The word justice means it is a decision. It means you're making decisions based on what's right. What's just? What's an appropriate thing? In other words, God is saying this. When you sit down to make a decision to serve, or you sit down to write a check for his kingdom, when you make, when you sign up, when you sign, when you log on, guess, guess what? You can give your tithes and offers online at the First Baptist Church of Glenarn. Online. Hey, hey. In this day and age where generations don't know how to Balance a checkbook, how to reconcile a checkbook, you can give online at the First Baptist Church of Glenard. When you sit down to do it, make the decision based on what's just. Is it just as good as God has been to you for you to sit down and write a check for $5 to church? $10? I'm asking the question, y'all ain't saying nothing. Is it just for you to write the check out for just a tithe and not consider giving God more in light of all that God has done for you, the miracles he's wrought, the prayers he's answered, the healing he's given? Don't walk out of here and say the pastor must need money. We don't need no money. We fine. It ain't about what the church needs. This is about your walk with God and transitioning yourself from being a stingy, selfish. You better say it, Pastor. Thank you for being here, Pastor Gooch. 
It ain't about that. I'm not after that. That's not what I'm hungry for. I'm hungry for you maturing to a place in your life that you are making decisions based on weightier matters and not continuing in the first grade. Get on out the first grade, dog. You the first one all day, I'm going to wait and watch you drop the money up here because ain't nobody done it all day. Thank you. Is it just the prayers that you know God answered on your behalf? How many of y'all been in, listen, I don't know y'all by name, but here's what I do know about everybody in this building. I know that something has happened in your life that you can look back and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nobody but God could have made that happen. Is it just that you still continue to give him $20 while you're giving to your cable company $80? Y'all ain't got to like this. Y'all ain't got to come with it. Is that just? He said, you got to make decisions based on weightier matters. Justice, mercy, I like that term, mercy. It's my motivational gift. Mercy means that you have compassion, pity, care. Don't you think about giving something above and beyond to help people who are less fortunate than you? you we ought to be glad that no hurricane came through here and took our community out. Do you have enough compassion to try to be a blessing to somebody else? Thank God you are in a church that believes in helping the poor and uh, feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. You are in a place where we are doing that. Come on, talk to me. Holler back at me. Say ouch or amen. Matter of fact, you got where you are by the mercy of God. You didn't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You didn't make yourself who you are today. You didn't get there by your education. God was merciful to you. Somebody showed you mercy. Somebody gave you an opportunity. Some of y'all in here got a job that you ain't qualified for. Somebody gave you a chance. And you ain't showing no mercy? Let me close this dynamic, fabulous, anointed word with this third and final thing right here. Right here in the text. He said, this is what you ought to have done, Jesus said. You should be giving based on justice. You're the second person. I'm going to wait on you too. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Justice, mercy, and faith. Y'all see those right, all those right there in your, is that in your Bible? Is that in y'all's Bible? Faith. That you've given to God on the basis of justice, mercy, and faith. Faith means I have the absolute confidence that God is in it. I'm going to do it because I believe God. Let me be clear. When it talks about giving by faith and writing the check out by faith, let me tell y'all, listen to me. Stop writing. Look at me. I want you to hear this. I ain't talking about writing a check that you ain't got no money in the bank by faith. That ain't what I'm talking about. I need to straighten this crowd out because y'all be writing checks talking about I did it by faith. The scripture says by faith. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. That's not what this is talking about. It's talking about you writing a check based on what you have in the bank. That you maybe had planned for something else or something that you wanted to save up for over there, or something else that you wanted to do with it, and, and yet you feel the unction from God that you ought to step out by faith and take what you have, a portion of what you have, and give it to him, and you have enough faith to say that if I give to God, he'll give it back to me, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If I give it to God, he'll give it back to me 30, 60, 100 times what I get. You've given it saying, I believe if I give it back to God, he's gonna give it back to me in greater portion than what I ever gave to him. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about. 
It's the kind of faith that says, I believe God that if I, if I obey him and trust him, that he will reward me in ways beyond what I ever dreamed or imagined. I believe sometimes our giving to God ought to be such that we feel it. Some of us don't, we don't feel when we give. David said, thank you, sir. David said, I will not give anything to God that does not cost me something. Some of you will never give God the opportunity to, bless, to be a blessing to you because it's not costing you anything. When it comes time to give, when it comes down to write your check, two numbers always come to your mind. And when that real high number come in your mind, you say, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. When it might be God trying to tell you have the faith to step out there and make a decision birthed out of faith. Here's what Jesus said. I'm closing. I wish I could stop right there, but here's what he says in verse 23. He says, you've paid your tithe down to the penny, but you've neglected the weightier matters of your choices. You should be making decisions based on justice, mercy, and faith. I want to challenge you today, not just in the area of giving, but in all aspects of your life. The aspect of serving, the aspect of sacrifice, the aspect of obedience. Whatever aspect of your life, God wants to take you to a weightier level of life and make decisions based on what's just, what's merciful, what's filled with faith. And then he goes and says, these you ought to have done without leaving the other undone. Yeah, yeah you ought to give based on justice and mercy and faith. Do that without leaving the tithe undone. Yeah, maybe that don't sound good to y'all, but that, I, I, that's good preaching. That's, I'm preaching up a storm up in here today. I'm, I'm preaching up, I'm, I'm teaching and preaching. I'm teaching and preaching up in here today. Because that's what God calls for us to do. Uh, and matter of fact, let me close. This is my second close. God said, this is, this is the way bringing my plane in for landing, coming in for... You see, you see you, what, here, here's what justice and mercy and faith looks like. You see, see when, you, when you buy your car and you make that monthly payment, that's what you're supposed to do. Then the car break down. Or maybe the car don't break down, you wanna get it washed. Or you wanna put some rims on it. You know, you got, y'all killing me with these rims that keep on spinning and the car doesn't stop and it's still, you done spent a thousand dollars and the rims are spinning, but you ain't going nowhere in your life. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Your wheels are spinning, but your life is spinning out of control. You spent spent four thousand dollars on rims, but you ain't spent four thousand dollars on the kingdom. Something's wrong with that. You out of control. Where are your priorities? <laughs> if I could kill, I would be a dead man today. I challenge you today to do what it is God has called you to do. These you ought to have done. Judgment, just, justice, judgment, mercy, and faith without leaving the other undone. Amen. Amen.